The Butterfield Overland Mail Route by Jason Otterlifter. The Butterfield Overland Mail Route operated from 1857 to 1869. Horse-drawn wagons were used to transport mail to and from St. Louis, Missouri and Memphis, Tennessee to San Francisco, California. The Butterfield Overland Mail Route was initiated by John Butterfield. He was born in 1801 and raised in the state of New York where he acquired his experience as a mail route driver. He eventually operated his own mail route near Utica, New York. In 1857, he was awarded a contract from the federal government to operate an overland mail route from St. Louis, Missouri and Memphis, Tennessee to San Francisco, California. This contract was the largest of its kind ever commissioned by the government. The contract was worth $600,000 a year for a period of six years and required delivery twice a week. The most common type of carriage used was the Celerity Wagon. One hundred of these wagons were purchased by John Butterfield to begin his overland mail route. These wagons were durable and well suited for the desert and mountainous terrain of the Butterfield Overland Mail Route. This southern route was chosen because it enabled the mail service to operate in the summer and winter. The wagon could seat nine passengers if there was room. A passenger would pay $200 for a ride from St. Louis to San Francisco or from Memphis to San Francisco. Passengers with other destinations were charged 10 cents a mile. A schedule of stops is shown here. Notice there is a schedule going east and a schedule going west. The time allowed from stop to stop is listed in hours. The passengers did not experience any luxury on this trip. The seats in the wagon did lay down to form a bed, but there was no upholstery. It was nearly impossible to sleep on a shaking, moving wagon anyway. Meals were available at the various stops that could be purchased for 75 cents to one dollar. Hotels were available for road-weary travelers who wanted to wait for the next coach in places like El Paso, Tucson, and Fort Smith. Accommodations along the trail were typical of life on the frontier. A hot meal and a chance to dust your clothes off were greatly anticipated from stop to stop. Various tribes along the trail were determined to stop traffic across their hunting grounds. The threat of attack from Indians was always a concern. Bandits were also known to attack the stage. The weather could be a major concern as well. Rain, snow, heat, and cold were environmental factors that simply had to be endured. Many travelers lost their lives along the trail. The conductor was responsible for the safety of the passengers and the mail. It would take a piece of mail or a passenger on the stage about 21 to 24 days to reach San Francisco. The early drivers were strong, capable men. Mail and passengers from St. Louis, Missouri and Memphis, Tennessee would converge at Fort Smith, Arkansas. A division was located in Fort Smith that was full of supplies and ready to stage for its march west. From this point, they would take a southern route through the Choctaw Nation of Indian Territory. Nails Crossing has a marker that testifies to its existence on the Butterfield Overland Mail Route. Boggy Depot was an important stop within the Choctaw Nation. Next, the stage crossed the Red River and headed for Denison, Texas. There are numerous markers across the state of Texas that identify stops along the Butterfield Mail Route. The Comanche were a major threat once the stage entered Texas. The stage would then progress to El Paso, which was regarded as the halfway point. At this point, the Rio Grande River was crossed and the stage continued on to Tucson. Leaving Tucson, the territory acquired known as the Gadsden Purchase was traveled and the stage would reach Fort Yuma. The stage then crossed the Colorado River and proceeded on in California with stops in San Diego, Los Angeles, and then finally San Francisco. Once the mail was delivered in San Francisco, it was time to start heading back. The Butterfield Overland Mail Route 
was a vital lifeline until it was eclipsed by the railroad. The commitment to the delivery of the mail is a testament to John Butterfield, the stage drivers, and the American spirit.